All right, guys, it's time to wrap up this mini series. We've looked at what CSS variables are. We've looked at how to use them in a project. We've looked at how we can use them in media queries. Uh, and then we've looked at how we can create fallbacks for them. Finally, it's time to see how we can use them to be interactive. And JavaScript and variables just work so well together because it makes it really easy to, to modify things on your page using JavaScript. Before, you could always change a the theme, but it was complicated how you had to do it. You either had to have a lot more CSS or um, you, know, you almost had two batches of CSS to switch through your themes. You just write the CSS once, change the variables with JavaScript, and bang, the whole site is changing. So we're going to look at how we can do that in this video. All right, guys, so here we are in CodePen once again. So if you do want to follow along, the link is in the description down below. So one of the big advantages with the variables is the way that the Java, we can modify it with the JavaScript. So here what I've done is I have two different options. Well, this is just a button that is going to change things when we click on it. And this button here is where we can actually, um, it's an input type color, which just brings up like a native um, color picker. There we go, in the browser. Um, so my native color picker in the browser, I can just select wherever I want and that's that. Um, so that's a cool little nice thing that we can use. So uh, coming over into my JavaScript now, I'm going to start with my button down here and then we'll move up to that one. Or actually, before we do that, let's um, do a couple of things. Let's set up our, um, our, our variables. So we're going to have a const and we'll have a few different ones. We're going to do color input, which is going to be this button or the, our color picker thing there. So that's going to be equal to document, document. Let's make this bigger so we'll be able to see what I'm writing. Uh, document.query selector and input. Um, and one nice thing with the query selector is I can actually do like input and then uh, the type equals color all inside uh, of there. So one thing, advantage with query selector, in this case, I, I only have one input, but if you ever had a site that had multiple, you could you can easily select something like that. You don't have to have a class on it or something. Um, even though query selector is a bit slower than get elements by class name and all of that. Um, we're gonna have a second one, which is gonna be our, um, our color, call it color button. So that one will be document query set, whoops, I also made a typo there, selector selector uh, for this one we'll just have button and our third one is going to be our color variable which is going to be equal to now for my color variable it's the one that I want to change and in this case we're going to use the yellow background that's on there so if we come and I look at my color my variables it's just called yellow so we can just come in here and say yellow there we go so my yellow is now set up. So for my button, what we're going to do is we're going to do our color button. And we're going to add an event listener for a click. So if somebody clicks on it, we want to do something, right? So if they click on it, we're going to do a function. So I'm using arrow functions on this, which are the ES6 way of doing things. So when somebody clicks on this, I want to change my yellow I want to change what it is. So um, what, how we can do that is uh, I can select the root pretty much by doing document dot document element. So the document element itself. So that's the root. And I can set a style on there. So we're going to do a style and we're going to say set property property. So the property that we're going to set is our color variable. And we're going to set it to green. So now if I click on this, it changes over to green. How cool is that? Awesome. <laughs> so fun. Um, so just by clicking on that, it changes. Now the one thing is if this person is using a browser that doesn't support CSS variables such as Internet Explorer, it won't work. Now the advantage with doing something like this is it can create a more custom experience for people who are uh, on um, you know, on more modern browsers, but for those who aren't, this website's going to work fine. It's just they won't get these types of things. And they probably won't have a button that changes the thing, but you could have it dynamically load, you know, if the person refreshes the page, you're bringing in a different color scheme, or even maybe if they scroll past a certain point, different colors start shifting, or, you know, you could come up with something fun to do. 
And so this is just a really basic example of how if I click on something, it will change it. Um, I, and, you know, it's not even going to change back. It's just setting the property to green. Something that's a bit more interesting would be with our little color picker here, right? So that one is a bit more dynamic. So we can do color input. And I'm going to add an event listener again, add event listener. So this time I'm not looking for a click though. I'm looking for a change because this has a property like you know, it, it, if I click on it, um, it has, you know, it's set to black right now. So I want to know if there's a change in this, so we can look for a change. And I'm also going to uh, keep track of what that change is. If you're not used to arrow functions, um, the underscore here, this is the same as just writing um, like the old way of doing it function with nothing in it, whoops, like that, and then the curly braces. Um, so you can take that whole function curly brace thing out and just sort of replace it with that and the arrow. And uh, in this case, because it's one thing I'm taking, I don't need to put it, this would be the same as doing the old function E, and then having it that way. So I can just do E and then do my arrow and it's just a little bit faster to write. Um, so the first thing we should do now actually is just do a console console log of E to see what this is actually doing. And of course, but if you do want this to work, you have to spell a listener right and not event listen. So uh, let's let me do an inspect on here just because I can't do it sadly within. Um, uh, so let's go over to my console and I'm going to click on my box here and let's change this and push OK and it's changed and so it's giving me this big thing so you can see that the event type is change so that's why I'm listening for changes so I'm listening for change and then it gives me all of these things here so one thing that you'll notice in here is I do have a target so if I look at the target and the target input is this thing itself and if I look inside of there there's a whole bunch of crap. Uh, for now, most of this isn't important, or for this thing, nothing much is in here that is very important, except all the way down here. All the way down, and there's a lot of stuff. Uh, we're looking for value, 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 value. And there's the color I picked. So if I do this again, and I change it, let's just go to pure red, and I click OK. And we have another one. So in there, my target, and scroll all the way down value type uh, there's type color value and there's the color red that i just got so just to show you instead of console logging e i can console log the e target so e target is what we were this whole big thing we're looking in and i can get the value itself so dot value so now if i click on this and i change the color let's go with turquoise ish the new console log is just giving me the color. Just to show you that work, let's clear that and make it a little bit easier to see. Push OK, and it gives me the color. And if I come here and I change again, it gives me the color. So that's really cool, right? So what we can do is, instead of console logging this, we can actually use it the exact same way we did it here. So even, we can copy all that and paste it. I just realized when I did this, I never really showed you what's happening. So we'll look at that in a second. So I want to change my color variable, but this time I don't want to change it to green. I want to change it to my E target value. So we can get out of here. Um, let's go to my elements and let's find, because we're in a code pen, so let's just do an inspect. And here's my body and here's my head and here's my HTML. So let's click on this one. So this whole set property on the document document element, as I said, that's the same as the root and the root is this baby right here. So if I come on here and I change my color now and I click OK, you can see that it's added class style is equal to and it's changing the yellow. So it's still called yellow, which is kind of weird. I should probably change the name of that, but it's changing yellow to be that instead. So that's why it's changing right here. If I click here again, now I can go down and click OK, and it's going to change it there. And with my green button here, if I click, it's just going to change it to the green like I originally told it to. And then once again, I can come in and choose my new color there. So this is something you can't do with SAS variables. Um, and 
there are ways of doing this without variables, but you can probably imagine a, a world where this, uh, you know, right now I'm changing the variable yellow and I'm only using the variable in one place. But if this variable were used in 15 or 20 different places on my website, I could change them all at the same time, which is something that could be a lot more complicated before. So it just makes it really, really easy to make quick changes to any variable you have on your website on the fly. And these variables could be modified based on anything that JavaScript could could monitor pretty much. So that's really, really cool. And uh, you can do some really fun stuff with that. So uh, yeah, go forth and explore this and see and have fun with it. Because I think it's a really cool thing that's being underutilized, especially now that browser support for it is really increasing. Sadly, it's not there 100%, but it, it's much better than it used to be. That was a lot of fun. I think that was cool. I'm looking forward to seeing where they goes, but I'm definitely going to be incorporating them into my workflow from now on. So I had a lot of fun exploring them with this deep dive. I hope you did too. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. Of course, if you liked the video or you liked the whole little deep dive we just did, hit the thumbs up to let me know. If you watched all this and you haven't yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. A big thank you to my patrons who are supporting me. They help make this series and just every video I make possible. So thank you so much. If you're curious about how you can support this channel, there's a link down below. Click on it for Patreon. Find out all about it down there. And until next time, don't forget to make your corn on the internet just a little bit more awesome.